Hey, hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hey, AJ. Thank you for moderating the stream again. And before we start, the disclaimer, we are discussing stuff to play a computer game, even though we try to understand the concepts and um, technology as it works in real life. It stays a computer game and this is all what we are talking about. So don't mess with railways and tracks and trains and anything that is in the game. What I wanted to do today is to have another look uh, at the nice old trains that we use in the Bremen Oldenburg DLC. So this is the DLC that we are playing in Bremen Oldenburg. And we had a video a couple of weeks ago where we discussed the technology that is involved in the classic German Electrolux like the E110 and um, um, if you have not watched this video you might want to watch it too to see how those Fahrstufen uh, Schaltwerk and stuff like this work works and today we want to look at the reverse end actually what did I do now? Oh no, that's, this comes later. This is the saved game. Um, but I want to play a service before we jump into the saved game. A saved game I prepared to show you a signal of a special kind that we uh, did not have before in the stream. We are already running in the that is not the correct service, so I take it out. We are already running in the cap car. And let's do it um, to get into the game. We are already running in the cup car, uh, approaching Bremen Hauptbahnhof. And why I am doing this is actually to uh, showcase a signal that allows you to pass a red signal. You remember most probably that there is this signal to white dots in a diagonal fashion climbing that is shown with a red signal and this is a signal that allows you to pass the red signal and there is another signal that allows you to pass a red signal if it is shown together with the red signal it is called a Vorsicht signal, a caution signal, and so no violate the 50 here. How this cap car here, the Karlsruher Kopf works, this is actually what I wanted to look into deeper in this stream today after we have done this night run into Bremen and have had our look at this Vorsicht signal set a seven I think it is called at the moment you don't see much but you see the nice dark cab in the Karlsruhe Kopf and the driving controls the brake gauges and the three uh, indicators that show voltages and amperages. So we will talk about this. This is always an interesting effect if you're getting close into a station of that kind. You always get this weird effect on your windscreen. Well, now we're stopping. There is a Zugdeckung signal on the right side. Another signal that we have not talked about. But what I wanted to talk about is actually the signal that comes at the end of this track here. 
Wasn't that a nice stop, huh? Train left of us is starting, and it is the last stop of this service from my saved game. And now I'm just unloading passengers, and then I wait that I can take the train into the sidings. Okay. Since we have loaded a saved game, I have to put the light switch into headlights. Since yeah, otherwise we will run with with dark. No chili. You have to wait until the stream is over, and then you get something to eat. Hmm. Now that we have no passengers on the train anymore, we can turn the train lights off. And now, this is the signal actually that I wanted to introduce and show here. It looks like this, it is the red light and underneath the red light we have these three yellow lights in this V-shaped fashion, V like Vorsicht, Caution. And there is The description for the signal, this is again the Directive 301 of the DB Netz AG with all the signals and this is a signal called set a 7 Vorsicht Signal am Signal HP0 oder am gestörten Lichthauptsignal ohne schriftlichen Befehl vorbeifahren und weiterfahren auf Sicht. So this is actually what we have here. It means uh, pass the signal showing a red light showing stop without a written order and uh, then proceed on site. This is what they tell you here. And then you have to proceed until you find the next signal. So this is a different signal, what we know already. Of course, it happens sometimes in the game and we have seen it on the stream already is this signal here, the SH1 here, this one with the two white lights and it says in Verbindung mit Signal HP0 zeigt das Signal, dass das Haltegebot für Rangierfahrten aufgehoben ist, meaning in connection with a red light, this SH1, those two white lights in a di 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 diagonal fashion show that as a shunting service you can pass this signal. And this is actually a difference between those two signals. This signal, red light with the two white uh, lights diagonally ascending only allows you to pass as a shunting service whereas the Vorsicht signal also is valid for uh, normal line services, Zugfahrten, not shunting services and then you can proceed until you get to the next signal uh, on site. And this is what we can do in the game here. Let's take the PDF out of the stream. So we can release our brakes. We are still in a restricted 500 hertz monitoring, as you can see from the indicators here. We have a video about this as well, so I can't go faster than 20, what is okay since I have to proceed on site anyway. And when you're passing a signal of that kind, what you have to do is to press and hold this key, the PZB override or Befehlstaste. And then you will see that this light here, the white Befehl 40, should actually light up as soon as we pass the 2000 Hz magnet. It does, see? We don't actually hear a sound, usually you would hear a sound according to it. And then as soon as you have passed it, you can let go of it. You're restricted to 40 anyway. Yeah, thank you. At the moment it is intended because it is not the service that I prepared that I'm driving here at the moment, so I will bring the second line back as soon as we are in the service that I am actually, uh, that I have on my roster for today. And this is just an addendum because I saw it that they finally 
have this signal in the game and I have not seen it anywhere else before. There we go, CD Radar, hello. Nice to see you. What is funny in, in this um in this DLC with those trains, the red lights that uh, are at the end of the train are extremely powerful. You can see they are really lighting up the area in red and now when we are passing this red sheen everything turns red in the cap. Like now. Uh, not if I... What was that? Was it the Cifa or whatever stopped me here? Some brakes came on. No, I can start again. Game wanted to prevent me from showcasing the red lights. That's always the fun when you're uh, loading a safe game. You never know what happens with your security and safety systems. And why is still on? No, it doesn't. Probably the lights. Yes. So, will you let me... If it was... No, it does not let me start again. I don't know in what lock we are. No, so PCB release, CIFA, all the brakes released. I don't know what stopped us here. We are not actually in a... Did I move my reverser? Maybe the Hauptschilder got killed. But then we should have this light on. No, it works now. Here, now I've got the red sheen that I wanted to, <laughs> to showcase. Well, they are extremely powerful, the red tail lights, right? They are almost as powerful as, as the headlights are even more powerful. All right. So this was the first uh, jumping into the game with this signal. So that we have this, we have a video about uh, Befehl 40 passing a red signal with additional signals uh, video, but we did not have this Vorsicht signal then. Yeah. Another thing, ne never, never trust the safe game feature. You will always end up in a weird setup for your safety systems. I did not hear anything from the PCB uh, at the moment. So, anyway, now let's start properly. And here is the third line at the logo. And what I wanted to do, I wanted start a proper service with the Karlsruher Kopf, the driving trailer or cab car to the Enwagen dynasty, you want to say proper, probably. The cars that were omnipresent in Germany in the 70s, 80s and even in the 90s still some of them before the Dostos took over and uh, yeah we are already sitting in the cab car this is the cab of the cab car and you can see on the other end here at Oldenburg main station at the other end we have uh, Baureihe 110 that we will be driving from the other end 
One problem we can already see our enormously powerful red lights, tail lights, are not lit. So maybe we can do this with the external camera. It actually works. So if you want to do it properly, you should have this light at the end so that everyone approaching your train from the back knows that this is the end of the train, not the tip, even though the locomotive is at the end. And this is this beautiful cap car to the N wagon. And um, let's have a look at the cap first. What do we have here? For driving, for driving controls. We have a, we are obviously um, a reverser. We have to put in this very chunky reverser key. Then we have a setting for off, neutral, uh, forward and reverse. That is quite normal. We have our PZB keys here. We have a brake release, a send and a wheel slip protection key, pantograph, mine circuit breaker, all that's what we need to remote control the locomotive. We have a speed clock here. We have a regular time clock here. So if you wonder what this indicator actually is, this is a clock face just uh, showing the time. And on the right, we have our brake gauges. So on the bottom, the yellow hand, very important, is for the brake cylinder pressure. This is the brake pipe, Hauptluftleitung. That is already not uh, or not filled yet. It needs to go up to five bars so that we can drive it. This is, um, I think, for the side behälter. This is um, not working in the game as far as I have seen. If you are overcharging your brakes, then you should get a reading here about how heavily you overcharge the brakes and how much air there is still in the side behälter until the brakes are again on their normal pressure. You can see that this is uh, the name of the car, BNRDZF463. There were actually uh, a whole uh, lot of different versions of this driving car, of this cab car here. There are actually more Karlsruher Köpfe than heads on a Hydra and everyone supposedly was built in a different way, so you never knew um, what technology actually there is on those um, cab cars. You can see that you do not have a, a lever for the throttle, but what you have is this funny thing where you can set this lever to four positions and in the fourth position run up it always switches back to hold so this works in a way you can either shut off the throttle you can put it in a position where it holds its Fahrstufe, its tap where it runs down or where it is switched um, upwards so this is applying throttle and even more throttle and what you do not have and this is actually quite surprising if you drive this thing for the first time you do not have a dial that tells you at what tap at what Fahrstufe you are actually driving at the moment on the HUD in the game you would see it but in the cab you wouldn't you have only those three indicators here or actually only the one in the middle and the one on the right giving you indication about you can see it Fahrrad and Fahrmotorspannung that is the overhead voltage and the traction motor voltage and on the right side the traction motor amperage and from the readings of those indicators you can actually guess at what Fahrstufe, at what tab your locomotive is operating at the moment. We will have a look at this in a presentation in a couple of minutes but first just as an introduction this is what you know about the status of your locomotive and how much power it is applying at the moment. You have those indicators underneath that give you a light if the main circuit breaker is off, like this is the one to the left. If I open the main circuit breaker, it lights up. Those two are 
often on lifter. This is the um, air compressor. No, no, the traction motor fan is lifter, traction motor fan. That is by default set to off. Maybe you want to put it too high and on, then you don't see those two lights that much in the game. See, they already went dark. So this light uh, should actually uh, light up if there is something wrong with the fan uh, that is supposed to cool your uh, transformer and mm, and stuff in the engine. Überstrom LED, this indicator would light up if uh, there is a problem with the overhead voltage. If the overhead voltage drops and you have too high currents running through your engine, then this should light up. Totally does not light up in the game. And the right one is if the transformer itself is overheating, if there is some problem with the oil, um, so that the transformer is getting too much heat, and this one should light up. The lifter and trafo shoots in the game, they are on all the time, unless, as I have seen, you set your traction motor fan from off to high. If you have it in off, then it, it usually um, the, the fan only turns on if the motor or the the uh, transformer gets too hot. If you put it too high, then you will have it running all the way and then you will never get in a situation where your stuff gets too hot and then those two indicators should stay actually dark and not confuse you. You have, that is a funny thing actually, two switches for the instrument lights. You have here a switch for the instrument light and you have here a switch for the instrument light. Why is that? Why do we have two switches for the instrument lights? Because this thing here in the middle is actually um, a table that can uh, be uh, uh, replaced by a different kind of table. There are screws, you can see the screws, and if you loosen the screws, you can actually take this table out of the driving cab of the cab car and replace it with a different table with different controls. And why do you want to do that? Because um, Sometimes the controls do not fit uh, to the engine on the other end of the train. So this is actually the setup for an electric locomotive. But if you have a diesel electric locomotive on the other end, then you need different controls. And so you get a different table. So you can actually use the same cap car with a totally different locomotive. Only this table needs to be replaced by a different one. And this is why um, this has a different color and uh, there are those screws and you actually have those two switches for the instrument lights here at the table and the instrument lights over there. In the game actually as long as one of those switches is turned on all the indicators engage the solid up. But I think this is uh, the reason for it. Another thing that is important for setting up the train is this switchboard here. You have all the circuit breakers. You have here the switch for the car battery that is typically on. It needs to be on to uh, properly work. Those two switches are actually to test if the insulation of the battery uh, works properly. It does not work with the indicator here though so as soon as you put one of those switches into on then actually the voltage should drop to zero if i'm correct and then if it doesn't then you see that you have an insulation problem and we have a severe insulation problem obviously because it doesn't drop at all this is the switch for the cab lights here if you want to turn on the cab lights and this is the switch for the destination board on the outside of the um, trailer. You can see we have a destination board. Just sit down so that I can use the external cameras again. Here. At the moment there is nothing showing on the destination board. We have a crank for setting it then we can tell people where we are going and if we want lights we can turn them on here what we already did the problem is with this destination board it always deletes itself or it 
gets deleted when you're driving at the moment you have it and then at the next station you look again then it is back to zero so that is a problem this is an important switch because it sets the lights on the outside of the train from tail lights red lights at the moment to headlights and this switch here what is actually not a switch but uh, in real life this is the switch where you can uh, switch between electric uh, table use here in the car and diesel electric table use and uh, from what you can hear uh, from videos on the internet um, there used to be actually a knob on this switch where you could switch those two modes but since uh, drivers sometimes forgot to switch it or had it switched into the wrong position and then the whole uh, cab car did not work they removed the knob and uh, made it fail safe for the drivers this thermofach little switch i think it is here this thermofach where you can cool or heat your drinks your coffee or your water also you can hear stories on on the internet that this was sometimes a problem for draining the battery if the thermofach was not switched off in the game you don't have the problem you cannot switch it off the only thing that you can switch here is the pcb if you want to turn on the pcb safety systems you have to switch it on here and the sifa obviously the sifa needs to be turned on as well you can read it here sifa but it is not functional so how do we switch on the sifa on this car does it not have a sifa it has but it is hidden a bit if we sit down again this is the switch for the sifa a quite massive lever to turn on the sifa next to the ackermann horn the emergency brake valve that we have talked about in the last stream regarding the Baureihe 110 so this is the thing that can actually send your ears ringing for days if you release it to apply an emergency uh, brake okay this is more or less our driving cap here i should say let's restart the service actually drive it a bit and at the next station let's have a look uh, at the presentation and when we actually get to bremen then i wanted to have a look on the modeled uh, thingies that are uh, actually underneath those those cars and the, a lot of things that should be there in real life are actually modeled what is nice some are missing well okay so can open the doors what did i say we need to do turn on the pcb we can switch on the destination board we have to use the headlights that is important then the sifa brake setup obviously brake key to on brakes to release this upper lever here is for the direct brake that only stops the locomotive so you can see here the pressure is dropping in the brake cylinders and to stop our train from rolling away we can give it a bit here with the direct brake to hold it on two bars that the train is not running away then we had the thing with our tail lights let's see if we can switch them on with the external camera so that we are complying with the signaling rules in this aspect yes worked worked nicely let's give the passengers some light in the train for that we need to have the train line power on and then we can switch the lights on and off we're actually already a lot of people on the train what we can do and this is as it was in real life too we do not 
need to rely on the passengers to close the train doors. We can do that from here, from the cab. So, and how do we drive this thing now? As soon as we are applying a higher Fahrstufe than zero, this yellow indicator here drops from 15 to zero and at the same time this black indicator starts climbing. Every time I use this control here to uh, apply a bit more power. You need to be careful with the starting program of the PCB. We can see we have an HP2 signal. From looking into our timetable, we know that we can go 16 or 40, what HP2 usually indicates. And at the same time, on the right indicator, this yellow hand here climbs to show us the traction motor amperage. So what we get is the traction motor voltage here and the traction motor amperage. And this is what we can go by and obviously we can see how fast we are traveling. But you can see this is quite old school. We don't have a traction effort meter, we don't really have a Fahrstufenanzeige, a tap indicator. We need to go by those electric parameters to know what we are doing. As soon as we are back to Fahrstufe 0, then this yellow hand goes back to the 15 kilovolts just past the sign that allows us to go 120 as soon as the train has passed as soon as we see this trapezoid sign from behind, we are usually with the whole train in a section where we can go 120, so we can accelerate now. And by accelerating, we always have to move this handle into OFF. And at the same time, you can see every time I do this, this black hand here climbs. And there is actually a limit in the operating rules. You are not allowed to drive from the cab car faster or with more attraction motor voltage than I think it was 460 volts. So this is the uh, dial in the middle, 460 volts is the limit. So we can still apply more power, but as soon as this black hand here goes into this position or a bit beyond, we should be careful. Minding our speed, closing in on the 120. And as soon as you're closing in, I let the traction motor voltage drop again, telling us that also the Fahrstufen, the taps are running down. And from experience we know that if this nice river here, if this black hand is at about 10, you are about at a steady speed. But obviously gradient and stuff can alter that a bit, so you always have to watch your speed. And if you're going too fast, you have to adjust. What we can see, we already passed the sign where we can go 160. I missed it because I was explaining the controls. But what we can see here on this diagram here on the pause screen is new to the game. It's the first time that I, uh, I have seen this working like this. We are now at the moment in a section where we can go 160 line speed.
And why does the indicator here on the pause stream give us a 140? Because of this, where is it? Here. This vehicle's maximum speed is 140. So even if line speed is 160, we cannot go faster than 140 in this vehicle. And this is something that was not a thing for the game. The, go the game just ignored that on the pause screen and we did not get docked for going faster than the maximum authorized vehicle speed. And now all of a sudden the game takes this into account and controls this to 140. But what you see is that it obviously applies this 140 only for a certain distance in front of you and then it stops applying this and then it looks as if you're approaching an increase in speed limit from 140 to 160. But when we go on, you will see that we never reach this. It is always in front of us. Now it looks like we made it to the point and we can accelerate and then we go on and then again next block and next time. So you can't go by what the pause screen is telling you here at this point because here the maximum vehicle speed is coming in and this increase here is born I think from the way that the game uh, simulates the the limit to the maximum vehicle speed. I've always warned on the forums about the game trying to take into account all the other speed limits apart from the track speed because it might end up being confusing and you never know what the game draws its speed limit from. And this is where we are. Now we're closing in on a station, Wüsting. I let the Fahrstufen run down. And then start applying some brakes. We can see that this hand now here indicates the brake effort. No longer the traction effort, but the brake effort. While at the same time, the yellow hand on the left of this indicator is at 15, showing us that we are actually running on fast to zero. This beep that we get at 30 kilometers per hour is actually telling us that the automatic thing that... Well, that wasn't the nicest stop that I ever made, but anyway. That the automatic door control that prevents the passengers from opening the doors during uh, when the train is driving actually um, has been removed so the doors can be opened obviously nobody wants to open the doors when the train is still running with 30 kilometers or a bit slower but it's more or less a warning for the driver that now the passengers can if they are stupid enough to do it to open the doors and might fall off the train and contrary to the British rule book, we don't really have rules for what happens and who has to inform whom if a passenger falls off the train. Or maybe we have it, but we I haven't seen them. Um, yeah, presentation. What did I want to do in the presentation today? Um, we have talked about how it works in the electric locomotive with the Fahrstufenschaltwerk. So if you have not seen that, um, uh, I invite you to watch this video about the Fahrstufenschaltwerk uh, electro electric locomotives. Um, what we have learned there is in a locomotive with the pantograph up and the main circuit breaker closed, we have a current that comes from 
the overhead catenary runs through the pantograph through the main circuit breaker through one coil in the main transformer and then through the steel wheels back into the track so we have a closed um, electric circuit here that has a voltage of about 15,000 volts and due to the specifics of a transformer as long as no power is drawn out of this primary side of the transformer there is no amperage actually even though we have a high voltage here and we can see the overhead voltage in our locomotive on the um, on the indicator for it and this should be the 15,000 kilovolts typically and should not change in real life it changes because um, other trains are drawing energy from the overhead catenary too so it always uh, changes a bit uh, below or above the 15,000 volts and uh, to actually use this energy we have to set our Fahrstufenschaltwerk, our tap changer to uh, tap a Fahrstufe higher than zero and then let it climb to get more and more and more and more energy out of this coil send it into a second coil where uh, where it gets picked up and fed into the traction motors not only this one all four of them um, but is transformed in this transformer to a much lower voltage of maximum 500 kilovolts uh, 500 volts or 0.5 kilovolts and we have seen when we are driving from the cap car we are limited to 460 volts and this is you can see with a bit of a safety margin that value that we have here what we have seen in the locomotive is that we could get a reading for the overhead amperage as soon as there is actually energy drawn out by the load of the traction motors we get uh, a reading on the overhead amperage the Oberstrom uh, indicator and for the energy that is actually running through the traction motors we do not get any more the traction amperage but it is also already converted into the tractive effort the Zugkraft and this is shown on one of the dials in the locomotive that was the locomotive and now what we want to do today Fahrdraht, yes <laughs> it is still almost Czech Fahrdraht now let's have a look at the um, cab car, the driving trailer, uh, Steuerwagen in German. This is the car at the other end of the train and why do we need it anyway? Uh, if we have a cab car at the end of our train then we do not need to turn the train around to run back uh, the way it came from uh, what is obviously always a bit difficult you have to run the loco on the other end of the train or train the whole uh, turn the whole train around or have actually a loop that the, ca the train can go through more easy or much easier it is if if you can just reverse and with modern trains typically emus you have caps on either end of the train and you can drive them from both sides obviously and uh, yeah in former times when we had actually locomotives pulling the passenger cars then you either needed one locomotive on either end so one locomotive on either end so that you can change that but then you have two locomotives for this one train um, uh, or you have this cap car solution where you can remote control the, the locomotive from the other end and for that the cab in the cab car needs to be connected with the locomotive obviously so there must be a cable running through the whole train so that you can remote control your locomotive and you have what we have just seen already in the game not the same indicators and controls that you have on the locomotives but a different set of them and those are the three indicators that we have just seen uh, on our table in the train it's actually two indicators showing a voltage and on the right one it's this one that's showing an amperage and uh, those 
thingies on the cab here communicate with the locomotive uh, through this cable and on the train that we are running at the motive uh, at the moment we have a cable or um, a mode of communication between cab car and the locomotive that is called the conventionelle Wendezugsteuerung KWS the conventional push pull train control and it is actually a very very thick cable with 36 pins in it so actually 36 cables uh, merged into one and uh, the locomotive and the cab car use those uh, cables to communicate to send information about what the locomotive is doing in one direction and in the other direction what the locomotive is supposed to do and uh, we will have a look at the uh, sockets and uh, plugs that are needed for this kind of uh, connection and they are huge we can see it on the train they are actually quite nicely m uh, modeled and uh, when we're at Bremen we will have a look at all those stuff and how it is modeled in in the game here and through this uh, this cable here we get readings and the first reading that we get is the 15 kilovolts overhead catenary voltage overhead voltage on the left side with the yellow hand we have seen that but only if the fast roof is at zero if the fast roof is at one through 28 i think it is the highest one then this hand on the left side will drop to zero so this is actually an indicator that you are in a fast roof higher than zero and that your train is reacting if the yellow hand on the left is going down to zero then you know okay now i have actually managed to apply fast to one or higher uh, on the other hand if you are uh, releasing the throttle um, and you see the yellow hand on the left side climbing to the 15 or about that value uh, on the left side of this indicator then you know now my tap changer has actually reached tap zero fast to zero if you are in a higher fast to than zero then you will get what we have seen on the right side of this uh, indicator with the black hand in the game um, shown how much voltage we have in this pink circuit here tractive effort voltage so the traction voltage motor spannung and on the right indicator that shows an amperage we see the corresponding traction amperage so we get for this pink circuit here the uh, voltage and the amperage and if we multiply those two then we have the power that is actually uh, getting drawn in this in this circuit so we can actually guess how much traction power we are applying but we need to do this in our heads or more or less guess from those two readings how much power the locomotive is applying and then we can multiply it divided by the speed that we are going in our head or just always guessing obviously and then we have an idea about the tractive effort that is what we get as a reading in that locomotive on, on the modern display you see much has to happen in the driver's head to get the same reading that we already get uh, without having to think about it in in the cap of the locomotive itself and with those readings we have to control the train and it works it actually works quite well and it is fun driving this cap car in the game i have to admit I have to repeat that the route is not really so interesting to drive, but uh, it, it's actually fun driving this cab car, in my opinion. So what is the left one? We have not talked about the left one. The left one, it is uh, labeled with uh, Heizspannung. What is the Heizspannung now? That is um, a circuit, an electric circuit, that we have not talked about in the game so far here let's uh, have a look back at the locomotive and the main transformer and next to the primary coil that has all the 15,000 volts in it there is another coil where the uh, voltage gets transformed down to a lower voltage typically 1000 volts or one kilovolt here and I've painted it orange 
And this is used for all the head and power energy that we need for lighting in the cars, for the PA system when the driver wants to talk to the people, for um, heating, obviously, and uh, if people want to charge their phones with the sockets that are in the train, all this energy comes from this coil here. And uh, this is the head and power voltage. In the game it is not simulated, it is always at zero. Typically it should go to at around 1000 volt, so that you can see that your train has actually some head and power voltage and that passengers can charge their phones properly. That the energy can get from the locomotive to the sockets and the passengers and the light bulbs and the heating in the train, we need a second line that is running along the train. I painted it in orange here, and this is the so called Zug Sammaschine, or sometimes called Heizleitung, because it is obviously mainly used for the heating in the train, the electric heating. In uh, English, I think you would call it a train line. Also, this one is modeled. You can see it uh, from train uh, to uh, from from car to car, from locomotive to car, and from along the line of the cars. And we will have a look at this later. And then there is actually a third line that is running on this particular train that we are driving here. So next to the KWS for controlling, remote controlling the locomotive and next to the uh, cable that uh, conveys the energy for the heating and for the lights. We have this, what I've painted here in green, and this is the UIC uh, wire, the WC kabel or IS uh, Leitung, uh, Informations und, what is it, Steuerungsleitung, that is information and control. Um, uh, wire and this is used to send back from the locomotive or from the cab car um, orders to the installations in the cars that turn on or off the lights for example or that close the doors that is the main uh, purpose of this uh, wire, especially in its original form with the 13 uh, little wires pressed into it. Um, turn lights on and off, close the doors and the rest of the wires are used for the PA system when the driver wants to talk to the people in the cars. Later on, people uh, invented a lot of uh, interesting gimmicks to use this green cable here to um, send even more uh, orders like for the uh, emergency brake suppression that system that you need so that your burning train does not stop uh, in a tunnel for example this is uh, or there is a system that runs on this UIC on this on this cable um, or sometimes this cable is actually used for the electro-pneumatic brakes and there is a system of remote controlling the locomotive from the cab car through this UIC cable so that you can actually get rid of this black thick a cable for the remote control then you do some multiplexing and uh, send the information that is needed to remote control the engine not through 36 uh, cables uh, separately but you use more modern techniques to send your orders on the same wire but this is a different story we are running on a very conventional train where, where we are still using this 36 uh, pin cable to remote control the locomotive Later, when we're done with the service, we will have a look at what we can see of all that stuff in the model that we are running in our virtual world. I find it very interesting to look at this stuff and try to understand what is actually model, what we are actually using here and what are the technical concepts involved. And uh, as always, it is much more complicated than you 
think at the beginning. And for running the train in the simulation without the HUD, it is important that you can, uh, yeah, n that you know what those indicators are telling you. So, back to our trains. We are using the UIC wire to lock the doors. Doors are locked. We are releasing our brakes. Those are controlled purely pneumatically with air pressure. You can see the yellow hand already dropped from the 15 to 0. That means we are in some uh, Fahrstufe. The black one climbs slowly, the yellow hand for the amperage climbs higher. So to prevent the train from going into a, a jerky movement, it is always important that this amperage does not rise too high in the beginning. So that you do not apply a too high Fahrstufe and too much voltage on the traction motors with that they cannot deal. But as soon as the train is running you can <coughs> apply more power. Actually you have to wait. We're not done with the streamer, I told you. Limit here is 160 again, for us 140, and you can see we're constantly, all the time, we think, ah, oh, we're just getting to an increase in speed limit, but we're never getting there. And I asked on the forum if anyone knows anything about this change to the system that the game uses to control maximum speed. But not a lot of people responded. And obviously there is no information out. About how this is supposed to work. And why it is there. Scenery looks nice, doesn't it? With the misty weather and the clouds in the sky with the rising sun. Closing in on maximum speed, letting the traction voltage drop to at about 10 here on the reading, I'm not actually sure what it is, and then even a bit lower, so that we can keep the speed. The problem is that our speed clock stops at 140, so we don't really see when we are accelerating beyond the 140 on that speed clock. So we always have to leave a bit of a margin of error. Same time I don't want to lose my brake gauges out of sight. You have to get used a bit to this way of driving the train because 
Now we are parsing the advanced warning that we are approaching a limit to 120. So I remove all the power. You can see the yellow hand is back at the 15 volts. That shows us we are actually at Fash 2 for 0. Here is the 120. And now slowing down for the stop. When releasing the brakes, always keep in mind that when you're switching down one notch from minimum application, you will end up in um, a setting that is called off. What prevents the brakes from releasing still. So to release the brakes, actually, you have to switch two notches beyond the minimum. Why is that if you are applying power and put air brake to release, all the power uh, is, is, is lost? Did that happen? We will give it a try, CD Radar. Applying power and then put air brakes to release, all the power gets lost. I don't think this happens, but let's see. By the way, if you ever wondered where the people in Hude are, why are there no passengers? What happened? A zombie ap apocalypse? A pandemic? Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Ah! Here they are. And, on the other hand, they don't dare to leave their position and wait for someone careless enough to enter into the catacombs. It was closed. Direct break to release. Applying power. Train is moving. We can see that we are getting a traction motor amperage. And now you said when I'm applying power and setting the brakes to release, then I lose all my power. But the brakes are in running, I release them. Yeah, you're right. This actually happens. We can build up power again. But this this really happens instantaneously, right? It did not just run down, it just flopped. <coughs> no chili, you will get uh food later. But you have to do you have to let me do my stream first. If you're not contributing, you have to wait. 
So maybe this is actually a glitch. Let's let's see. There is a button actually for an emergency uh, emergency power off. I will push that and see how fast the train reacts to that. So if I push the emergency power off button, well, yeah, it dropped quite quickly. Let's try it again. Now I cannot try it anymore. Probably we... Now we don't get a reading at all. We have uh, overhead catenary voltage of zero and I cannot apply any power anymore after pushing the emergency power off. But the main circuit breaker light does not turn on. Let's see if we can get some power again. Aha! Now we are getting power back. How did we manage that? We have to stop in Borg-Holzberg. Well, I will have to look into this if this is prototypical. If pushing your um, brake lever into release should provoke an emergency power off. But interesting, I have not seen that before. So obviously we are a bit late now since our experiments were well. Well, I'm using it to quickly lose power if needed, so it is practical, says G uh, CD Radar. True. It is more or less like pushing the emergency power off button.
Can you overcharge brakes on, on a metro train? I understand that you're talking about the game, but um, just came into my mind. Yeah, modern trains do not use brake pipe, except for an emergency, right? We have seen that on the, what was it, the 422, I guess, the brake pipe is all uh, always drained it's always at zero in the game because it is only used for an emergency Now I apply um, too much power too fast to demonstrate this kangaroo movement and now the train takes it. It's actually funny. It's only a short run to Hoying Camp. I mean air brakes are there, but brake cylinder pressure is controlled by electric impulse, not by the second brake pipe pressure. Yes! That's that's uh, my understanding too. So usually you have EP brakes. Another Im Im implementation for the UIC uh, cable, by the way, if you don't have a separate cable for that. But but uh, from my understanding, the brake pipe is still there in case all the electric electronic gadgets fail that you can still pump your brake cylinders with the pneumatic control of the brake pipe
At least our tail lights are still on. Let's see if I can do this kangaroo jumping movement. Yeah. I saw it a bit. But you can actually power through it. Delmenhorst. I think it's already the second but last stop before Berryman. And has a 120 restriction. We can see the advanced sign for it. So we don't need to accelerate to a higher speed than 120. Let's see if I can get a better stop out of this train. Now we're getting a, a VR0 signal indicating that the next signal is at stop. So we have to slow down to 80 first so that the PZB does not stop us. And then to 60, so that the 500 hertz magnet does not stop us. And then we can do the normal stopping procedure. And then don't forget that you're stopped in a 500 hertz monitoring or in a monitoring at all. Let's see if we still get the 500 hertz or if the signal clears until we get there. Oh, there is an interesting long comment of CDR. Actually, we have two types of trains in Prague the old ones, formerly from Soviet Union, and reconstructed. They are using break pipe exactly like a big trains oh maybe I should stop first and read then otherwise this stop is blotched again this is the 500 hertz that we're just approaching Now we've got the 500 hertz. Well, at least one 500 point stop. And we are, don't forget that, in a restricted 500 hertz when we start now, even though the signal has already cleared. And we don't have a DRA, a driver's reminder appliance, like they have in Great Britain. So don't forget we are in a limited, uh, in a restricted 500 hertz. We are not allowed to go. What is it with my brakes? Why are they not releasing? We are not allowed to go faster than 20 until we pass the signal. That's what I wanted to say. But the other new Siemens type, they do not have brake pipe at all. There is a safety cable and if electric current of that cable is lost, EP brake. Ah, that is like what they call in German a Schnellbremsschleife, right? A fast brake circuit. And they don't have a brake pipe even even uh, 
Not even as a fallback, as a backup device. Interesting. That was only the Cifa. Only one pipe with supply air, I see. So, passing the signal, you will see that those two alternatingly flashing lights and the 500 Hz lights turn off. And now we can accelerate again. Now we have to stop in Heidekrug. I forgot Heidekrug. So Heidekrug is the second but last stop before we get to Bremen. Yes, that is true. But I wanted to go to the perfect stop marker location. And so I just had to pass the 500 hertz. So this is a poor design for uh, poor station design. They should have placed their 500 hertz a bit on. Sometimes I see 500 hertz magnets, or I see platforms in station that seem to have more than one 500 hertz magnet that are apparently used in different situations so that the train does not need to pass the 500 hertz magnet when stopping in the proper location Or restart reverser. I don't think that this works any anymore. I read that, that this used to work with the uh, PZB60, but it is not supposed to work anymore with the PZB90. So restart piece of B all together, yeah. <laughs> that should work. But I guess this can get you a nice pep talk with your supervisor. <laughs> And you might lose more time with punching in the train data again. So Bremen Neustadt, this is the last stop before we get to Bremen main station. Here we have a hidden limit to 120 that is not signaled in any way. That we need to know. Can we already see it? Yeah, this is this limit here before we get to Bremen Neustadt
we get into a part where we are running downhill so typically coasting is okay here there is a stretch of track that is quite straight and then we go through a bend to the left and after the bend to the left at the second signal after the bend there is the restriction to 120 and there is no advanced sign, there is no signal telling us It's at about kilometer 40. But especially at night it is not so easy to read those hectometric signs. Oh, I have not tried those. The G6 scenarios on this map. I will definitely have a look into them. So now here's the bend to the left. Well, I was not going faster than 120 anyway. But if we had been going faster than 120 then we would have to slow down now because the 120 restriction that looks like it is far away still again this is not an increase here this is just our limit to our vehicle speed it's just coming in at the next signal not this one this is a signal from the back and now the signals you can see them on the horizon as it is so often the case it still looks like you have time to slow down to the 120 you are immediately in front of the signals it still looks like you have some time to get there you pass the signals and bush you are past the speed changing point now we are getting to a signal that is flashing green flagging us down and telling us that we have to go 60 at the next signal so we have to slow down to the 80 for the PZBO and then do our stop in Bremen Neustadt because the next signal with the restriction to 60 is just behind the station Don't forget to acknowledge the repeaters as well. I have never seen a repeater with a PCB magnet in the game so far, but the operating rules, they tell you to acknowledge the repeaters, not the magnets. Don't forget we are in a restricted thousand hertz at the moment because we stopped in the slowdown so we will be controlled to 40 but it stopped already. If not it would have been possible to release.
Well, because this is easy. Because the operating rules tell you so. And uh, I, I think it's just a thing so that people are just getting trained to acknowledge every signal regardless wh whether it is a full-blown distance signal or only a repeater whether there is a magnet or not and actually it is not such a big effort to acknowledge or to press the acknowledge key I have no idea if they do that in real life or if they don't. If they are al always going the same route every day and know where a magnet is and where there is no magnet. But from what I've read in the operating rules, they require you to acknowledge every signal, not every magnet. Now the reduction to 50 is coming up. Again, repeater, no magnet. Oh, stutter. And again a repeater. And this KS2, we have to Acknowledge because it is a KS2. We don't need to slow down anymore. Yeah, I guess they just want to have a, a clear regime and tell them acknowledge every signal. Regardless whether there is a magnet or whether you think there is a magnet or whether you can see there is a magnet. Just acknowledge, just press your key. Five hundred hertz. Zug Deckungssignal to the right. And the stop. Okay, let's release the train brakes and have the um, direct brake on. So, that was the service. Well, my braking was not really nice today, but I was reading the chat too much, I guess. Well, what I wanted to do before we end this stream, I still got some time left was to have a look on the brake installations that we have on the train and the installations for the cables and stuff because a lot of it I think is done really nicely with a lot of nice details details so what we have here is the main part of the brake equipment we have the selector for GP and R, R is that one is hidden here. So what is obviously set to R, what is the fastest brake mode? You know, you remember we have talked about this in the stream. Uh, don't break it if it ain't fixed. G mode is for freight uh, trains typically or slow moving freight trains. Um, and P and G, they differ in the time 
that the brake cylinders are actually filled so with G settings, they are filled slower than with P setting, but to the same pressure. With R setting, at a certain speed, the pressure in the brake cylinders gets increased so that the brake application is actually uh, harder. So that works here, obviously. We can switch those brake settings around. We can see that there are actually some gears that are connected with it, but what we don't see is where those thingies uh, attach to. What we can see here is this thingy, what is obviously the regulator valve that controls how much air gets uh, directed into the brake cylinders. What we don't see on this valve is the um, pressure converter that is necessary to um, apply the changes between P and R in this valve. And what we don't see, I think, is the emergency brake accelerator, what is typically um, connected to this thingy here. What we can see, on the other hand, is the distributor release, that is the Lösezug. We can actually release the brakes by pushing uh, or by pulling here, and then the pressure gets let out of this valve, and we can release a brake that is stuck at one car for example the lower end of this valve here is if um, I remember correctly the A chamber what is a part of this valve that is necessary to uh, to make sure that every car in the train gets the same pressure in brake uh, cylinders even though the brake pipe pressure might be lower at the end of the train. So more or less those differences are stored in this uh, lower part of this valve and um, make sure that the brake cylinder pressure is always the same throughout the whole train. This big drum here is the uh, auxiliary reservoir where all the air is uh, stored that gets um, directed into the brake cylinders if you apply the brakes. Um, this is what this valve here does. What I have seen... Well, this, this thing here shows if the brakes are applied or not and should be... Uh, should give you a reading on the left for this bogey here or truck or Drehgestell and the right one should give you a reading for this bogey or truck here and um, let's look at the car because uh, we can get it from the other end I think no here it is on the other end again let's check if we get a car that is set up in the different direction no they are all on this end I wanted to have a look yeah here this car is set up in the, the other way around you can see before that we have been looking from the other side, now we are looking from this side. This is the uh, regulator valve again. This is the release thingy. And this thing here, when I found though this thing, I was actually enchanted because it actually has a, a tag telling you what it is. It's the RLV2. And if I am... Uh, if I learned correctly from the videos that I watched on the internet, this is a so-called regelbares Lastbremsventil and what it does is well if you translate it to English it is a it is a controllable uh, load braking valve more or less and this is um, responsible for increasing the brake cylinder pressure in case that there is load in the cars so if there are passengers in the cars the car is supposed to brake harder uh, and uh, if there are no passengers in the cars, the car is supposed to brake not that hard. And for that, we get different pressure in the brake cylinders. And this is what this uh, valve here does. And how does this valve know how much air it is uh, supposed to put into the brake cylinders on top of it? Because there are um, passengers in, in the car. 
you can see part of this installation here actually modeled. This is our bogey. Each car has two of them on either end. I think it is a Minden Deutz light uh, bogey. And it has this thingy here. This is a valve that can that gets depressed the more pressure it gets from the coach on top of it. So if there are more and more passengers in the car, then the car gets heavier and heavier and pushes into those springs here. And this valve here gets uh, compressed and sends a pressure through those pipes here. And the same from the bogey on the other end. It has the same contraption here, like diagonally opposed. And from those two pressures that are sent to one valve, that is more or less a valve that that uh, that uh, that makes a medium pressure out of the two pressures that are sent to it. Then. Um, it sends this pressure to our regelbares Lastbremsventil here. And this valve lets more pressure into the brake cylinders according to what message it gets from those valves here. So it's fine that you can actually see that here. What you can't see is the brake cylinders actually and uh, the brake gears. You can see that there are the brake discs. So those are um, Enwegen cars that don't have brakes where a brake shoe is pressed against the wheel itself. But it is a, a type of car with brake discs. So there should be, but they are not modeled as far as I can see. Um, I think in English they are called calipers. More like Thingies like tongs that come from both sides and and hold those brake discs so that they don't turn anymore. And uh, on top of those axles, there would be the brake cylinder. But the brake cylinders are not modeled, and the calipers are not modeled either. And neither is all the piping that connects those parts that we have been talking about. We only have the auxiliary reservoir for the brake air, that is that. The smaller drum over there. I think this is the auxiliary uh, air reservoir for uh, the door closing mechanism. And here we can say our train brake is released so the brake indicator here is at zero. If I was to apply the brakes for the train, then you can see it turn to red. One big mistake, by the way, there should be a black dot in the red uh, field. Uh, because um, some people cannot distinguish between red and green. They are colorblind in that way. And to make sure that if your train workers uh, suffer this condition, that they can still distinguish between applied brakes and released brakes. So there should be a red, uh, a black dot in the red field. The other thing, from what I've seen in videos on the internet, these two indicators should not release at the same time. They should not turn from red to green at the same time. But the, I think the right one in this connection, the one on one side should release slower than the other one. Why is that so? Because those cars here have handbrakes. And this handbrake only works on one end and one bogey and not on the other and the bogey that has the handbrake with it like here 
That is the handbrake. And there is actually a sign telling us Handbremse wirkt nur auf ein Drehgestell. Not Drehgestell. Drehgestell. Telling us that it is only working on one of the bogies, not on both. And the one that has the handbrake attached to it, it should release slower because the um, the the indicator is wired in a different way. Yeah. What did I want to show on top of that is the wires that we have been talking about in the presentation. The 36 pin cable that is necessary to remote control the locomotive from the cab car is that thick cable here. Maybe we can see it from here in a better way. Here, this one. This thick cable is the it's the cable for the remote control and you can see we have it on both sides of the uh, the cars. We have it here and we have it over there again. This is a redundancy system. So if you lose one uh, connection that you still have the other. And it is built in a way that every car on every end has a socket and uh, on the other end has the cable. And if you have two cars, obviously, then you have two connections here. And from what I've learned on the internet, in, in the beginning, they would only use one cable. And in the end, they were ordered to use both. Oh yes, Metro Trains has this too. Uh, that, that was uh, for, the, for the load change, right? Good thing. The cable here closer to us and on the other end uh, as well is the train line. This is where the electricity for the heating runs. This is why we have this warning sign. Um, because there is 1000 volts on that cable approximately. Again on both sides. In the game they are coupled. All of them are coupled. Uh, in real life it will... It ca it, 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 Th there could be a problem if you have both of those thick wires coupled on the same side because when the train runs through, uh, runs through bends then the thick cable here can actually disconnect the cable on the outside um, if you're unlucky. Um, so at least at some point in time there was a regulation where you shouldn't uh, couple uh, both cables on the same end but the remote control, the, the KWS cable on one end, uh, one side and the train line cable on the other side. But here in the game they are obviously coupling it on both sides for both. Those cables here with the uh, red angle cocks are the cables for the... Uh, well, they are not cables, they are, they are uh, the pipings and hoses for the brake pipe. So the the one closer to the center of the train, I think, is uh, the brake pipe and the other one is the main reservoir pipe, the Hauptluftbehälterleitung. And they are, for redundancy reasons, also on both sides of the train. And all of it is coupled. And where is our UIC uh, cable? You remember the cable that uh, carries the orders for closing the doors and turning on and off the lights and even more later you can see it here coming from the locomotive. This should be, if I am correct, the UIC cable going into the train and into the train, into the cars here, not running here where the coupling is, but on top of it and uh, if I am not mistaken, you can see it in the cars. Here. I think this is the UIC cable. Why it has a, a red cross on a, on a white uh, socket? I don't know. I, I, I did not manage to find any reference for that. But I guess this is the missing cable. This should be the UIC cable then. By the way, all the cars here have uh, indicators for the brake cylinder pressure, but the one in the cab car 
has its hand broken in some way. You can see the hand, it is not in, in the center, and from here you can totally not see it at all. Here you can switch on and off the train light, by the way, and this is more or less uh, an order that you send through this UIC cable here, if I understood that correctly. This is uh, the the loo, obviously, and um, let's have a look at two uh, cars that are no cap cars, because there you can see that the gauge for the brake cylinder pressure is actually working there. I think here you can find it. Here it is at zero. Uh, well, obviously I'm not sitting <laughs> in the cap, so I cannot apply it from here. But yeah, so that is there. And those cars have also their hand brakes uh, simulated, modeled, and you can apply the hand brakes. What does not happen, if I've seen that correctly, is that the the indicator on the outside of the train turns red after applying the hand brake. What should do? What? Strange climb up. I'm already up. Let's look where it is. See, it is still green. I think it should uh, turn red on this side to indicate that the handbrake is there. And uh, what you also can't do is to leave this handbrake handle. Uh, in, in, in the usable position to indicate that the handbrake is applied. But okay, that is a bit much asked. In this case, I think the handbrake is air. If, if I've understood that correctly in, in the uh, pressure diagram that was shown in that video that I watched, in this case, they are using the air for the handbrake. The same um, reservoir air that is used for for the for the normal brake applications. So this is not a, a, a spring. What are they called? A Federspeicherbremse, a spring spring action uh, handbrake that is only released with air. If I got this correctly, it is actually um, an air-powered handbrake. Does this give us any information on the brake uh, reading here? No. What you can see is that there are 96 places for passengers. The car weighs 33 tons if it is empty and if it is full, 39 tons. It has a Knorr-Bremse mit Einheitsbauart uh, for settings G, P and R with automatic load change. It is a highly efficient brake. If it is set to R uh, setting, it is a disc braked, so it has brake discs. And those are the braked weights here with e-brake and without but it does not tell us what kind of handbrake it is. Well, that was that for today, I guess. I have to say it is really nice how many things you can actually see on those models and a couple of them actually work with some issues, like always, but all in all, those vehicles are fun to, to, to play with in the game, I should say. Let's sit down again. And uh, end the stream, maybe. Do we have a Intercity somewhere sitting around, no, only in ICE. With the um, 
the gray N wagons that the Baureihe 101 is pulling, you can see that those vehicles do not longer have this this thick cable for the uh, remote control connection for the KWS. Here you can see it in the uncoupled uh, version. Then those cables go into a dummy socket so that they don't fling around. And uh, yes, you can see that the socket itself, it gets covered with the lid so that there is no uh, dirt that goes into it. If it is open, it should look a bit like a stage box. Don't know if you are familiar with this stuff. If you ever played in a band, you will know that from what, where, where you are getting in all your cables and plugs on the stage that go to the mixer. And it looks a bit like this. That That's what it reminded me of. With this nice mole view of uh, Bremen Hauptbahnhof, I think it will end this stream. Uh, it was a bit more technical than normally, but um, I think this is interesting if you're using uh, Steuerwagen, cab cars, trailing or driving vehicles to actually understand a bit more or try to understand a bit more about the technology involved and how you can actually remote control your locomotive and what you know about the locomotive and what you don't. Thank you very much for staying with me and uh, take care, have a nice week and next week I think we are doing Sherman Hill cap signals or maybe even horseshoe curve signals, Norfolk Southern that is on the list but I will see how fast I can get to this. Or if you are doing Boston and uh, Uncharted Territory or 562 Territory with no wayside signals, only cap signaling. We will see. Thank you very much. Have a nice week. Take care. Bye-bye.